welcome to Chickenlandia. I am the president of Chickenlandia, and today I'm going to tell you all about how you can winterize your coop. When the temperature starts to get colder, the days start to get shorter, the chickens end up spending more time in the coop, you gotta clean it more often because they just poop so much. <laughs> this coop was perfectly clean yesterday, so this was this is one night's worth of mess, and it's already needs to be kind of straightened up a little bit. Look at that. If you want to see some simple ways to keep your coop clean between deep cleanings, you can watch a video. I'm going to put that link in the description and you can learn all about it. But today we are going to talk about winterizing our coops. And this is gonna be kind of funny because if you look at my coop, you will see that I really haven't done the things that I'm going to tell you about. <laughs> and the reason for that is that I live in a fairly mild climate. And in general, chickens handle cold weather a lot better than they handle hot weather. It depends on the breed, but for the most part, that is true. So I don't have to worry that much about, you know, doing a whole bunch of things to winterize my coop because my chickens are gonna be just fine in my climate. Now, there are areas even up here in the Pacific Northwest where it's fairly mild, where people need to take extra measures to winterize their coop. It's just higher elevations. Maybe they're closer to the water where there's more moisture. Maybe they are in an especially windy area. People will have to take some extra measures and just make sure that their flocks are nice and cozy and warm at night. Okay, I'm going to uh, talk to you while I'm scraping poop. <laughs> you will find me doing this in many of my videos. <laughs> oh, the chicken keeper's work is never done. So, uh, one thing I really want to stress about winterizing your coop is that a lot of people are like, oh, you know, I need to close up every nook and cranny. But for chicken coops, that is really not what you wanna do. You do not want to seal your chicken coop. That would be bad news. And the reason for that is when it comes to the colder months, it's actually the moisture in your chicken coop that is the enemy. It's not the cold. Chickens can handle cold. They're wearing big down jackets. They are huddling up next to each other. If you were to take the temperature inside the coop and compare it with what it is outside the coop, it's gonna be warmer inside the coop just because the chickens are warming each other as a unit. When there is too much moisture in the coop, that is when you really have a risk for frostbite. You also will have more of a risk for respiratory problems within your flock, which you don't want to deal with if you can avoid it. Just imagine there's a lot of moisture built up in your coop and you might possibly have ammonia fumes in your coop because your chickens are just spending way more time in the coop in the winter. That is a recipe for illness and problems and we don't want that. We want to avoid that. So the way that you deal with moisture in your coop is by adding ventilation, which feels really counterintuitive. We think, oh, well, we don't want there to be like wind blowing through our coops. <laughs> but if you are strategic about it, you will not have drafts where your chickens are roosting and that's where you really don't want it to be drafty. But you also can get a nice airflow going through your coop to keep the moisture level down. And I'll show you, I have some ventilation holes in my coop. Now they are covered with hard wire mesh because our little rodent friends can just 
get right through these holes. But th this is so important, not only for the winter months, but also for the summer. You want there to be nice airflow through your coop. Since I have these big windows in my coop, I used to cover them with thick plastic in the winter. But I have realized that I really don't need to do that in, in my climate. But if you're in a cold climate where there's snow on the ground for months at a time, then you may need to do that if you have large windows in your coop. And all you have to do is just cover it in a, in a nice thick plastic, or you could, um, if you found like a big wool blanket, you could use that. And that would work just fine to just be another way to keep more heat inside the coop. Now, full disclosure, here's my confession. I have too much moisture in my coop right now, and you can see, look at all that condensation. I was really puzzled by it for a little while because I did not have this last year. I do have ventilation in my coop. So I'm like, why, you know, why is this happening? Well, I got two more ducks and maybe it's just the change in the environment or maybe it is the ducks that are making it more wet in here. But whatever it is, I have to add more ventilation in the coop within the next few weeks because um, this can really cause some problems and I don't want that. I don't want to deal with respiratory illness. Frostbite will likely not happen here but I I just don't want to uh, you know create risk for my chickens when I don't need to. It's very simple to remedy that so I will be adding some ventilation in there very soon. Another way to keep the moisture level down in your coop is by making sure that you're not keeping water in your coop overnight. There's really no reason for it. It's going to add moisture to the air. I just think it's better to remove the water from the coop at night just to keep that moisture level down. You will see that I keep my waters outside of the coop. Now these are probably gonna freeze at a certain point this winter. It took me a long time to get a heated waterer. <laughs> I was just so stubborn about that. I didn't want to have electricity in the chicken yard, but it turned out it was way easier <laughs> than I thought. I do have electricity out here now. It made my life so much easier last winter. And I'm all about having chicken keeping be easy. Hashtag, I'm lazy. <laughs> If you can, get yourself a heated chicken waterer. And there's many, many different kinds. I use the one where my ducks can dip their face in it. I don't really use nipple waterers because I had one malfunction on me one time and ever since that happened, I just don't trust them. But many people use them and love them. So whatever you choose, if you want to make your life way easier and if you can afford to get one I would suggest getting yourself a heated waterer. Um, I'm just gonna show you how incredibly dirty their water is. <laughs> I want you to look at that and I want you to know that I changed their water like two hours ago and it already looks like this because I have ducks and ducks are dirty and messy. You too Mr. Robot. Another great way to keep your chickens nice and cozy and warm in the winter is by doing the deep litter method inside your coop. Some people really love it, some people don't like it, but it involves basically uh, very simply just creating a composting system inside your coop. And what that does is it actually raises the temperature inside the coop because we know that material that is composting is going to heat things up. I really like it. I used to use that method. It worked great for me until I got ducks. <laughs> because when you are doing deep litter method, you need to have dry conditions in your coop. small 
chicken run within my chicken run. And I've shown in many of my videos how I use it. I keep this chicken run to have a place where I can separate new chickens from my existing flock. But it is super handy in the winter because it's just another place where the chickens can go to be out of the elements. And what I do over the winter is I add a tarp to it and then it doesn't get snow inside and it also is shielded from the wind. So let me just show you what that looks like. We usually only have maybe a week or two of snow in my neck of the woods, which is just fine by me. I do not want to live on the surface of Mars. <laughs> so whenever snow happens, I will create a path from the coop to their run. And so that way they don't have to walk on the snow. They don't like walking on the snow. I see a lot of flocks where, you know, the chickens are making their little footprints through the snow. Every flock has a different personality. My flock is just like me. They don't like snow. <laughs> the ducks don't mind the snow at all. They eat it, they like it. The chickens, they don't like it. So right here, I will add a walkway of straw or uh, bark so that they can get to another area where they can hang out and not be in the coop all day long because they don't want to come out into the snow. There is a huge debate in the world of chicken keeping about heating your chicken coop. I've really seen people get really nasty to each other about it. And of course, I, I feel like that's really unfortunate. I think that chickens are humankind's most amazing common denominator. Let's get together about this <laughs> and talk about it in a, in a kind and respectful way. So I will say that in general, I do not recommend heating your coop in any way, really. There are many chickens living in really cold climates that are not living with supplemental heat through the winter. If you have the right breed of chickens for your climate, you will want to get cold hardy chickens if you live in a very cold climate. Generally, if they're allowed to acclimate to the changing seasons, then they do better without supplemental heat. The minute you introduce a heat lamp with whatever bedding you are using in your coop, and also with an animal that has feathers that could possibly fly into this heat lamp, you are really creating a serious fire risk. And you might say, well, you know what? My heat lamp is really well secured and that is likely true if that's what you're saying. I absolutely believe you. But the problem that a lot of people don't know about is that they're made pretty cheaply and they can explode. And if that happens, it could be such a tragedy for your flock, for your family. The other thing is if you are adding supplemental heat and the electricity goes out, like it can do in the winter when we have winter storms, that temperature drop is very bad for your chickens and you could wake up to such an awful scene. Now I do understand that there are some people living in areas where they're like, look, I've been dealing with frostbite and for whatever reason, maybe they just can't get the right dry environment in their coop. If that is the case and you absolutely feel like you need to add supplemental heat, what I would recommend rather than using a heat lamp is getting yourself a radiant heater for the coop. They have these panel heaters that are great. They're low wattage. The fire risk is quite low. And I would recommend that over a heat lamp any day and twice on Sunday. If you were paying attention, <laughs> you will notice that my super cute dust bath that I made for the chickens a couple weeks ago is not in the coop. They loved it, loved it, loved it, but they were making the biggest mess inside the coop. So I got something new and exciting that will keep the mess down. And I am going to show you that in my next video. So stay tuned. And if you haven't seen my video about making your own dust bath for the chickens, you should check it out. I'm gonna put the link in the description. It's a lot of fun and I hope you love it. <laughs>